Good morning. I'm Paul Feiner. I'm the Greenberg Town Supervisor, and we're interviewing Dr. Um, Ed Zuckerberg, who's a dentist in, um, in Dobbs Ferry. And maybe we could start by just asking you to tell us a little bit about the latest in um, dental uh, technology. Well, there's some real exciting stuff going on in dentistry right now. Um, the use of dental implants has really taken over as the number one source of tooth replacement now. Um, when I started practicing dentistry 30 plus years ago, there were lots of dentures being fabricated and um, that's a wonderful change, really enhancing people's quality of life. Um, in the office, technology in my office has really changed the way we do things. Uh, over the years, we've incorporated things like digital x-rays, which reduce patient radiation exposure by 70 to 80 percent. And the newest um, innovation in the office is a CAD CAM milling machine, which actually lets us do crowns, inlays, and veneers in one day for patients. Uh, while they're sitting, we um, will work on a tooth, we'll scan it instead of taking an impression, sending it out to the laboratory. Uh, and, and rather than having to come back in two weeks to have a permanent restoration, we're milling their restoration on this CAD CAM milling machine in 15 minutes and placing the final restoration at the same appointment. It's, uh, um, hi, I'm Danielle from Edgemont, and I have a question for you. Um, you seem to know a lot of t about technology, and I was reading the Time magazine, and I'm directing this a little bit back, uh, more back to your son, but he seemed to know a lot about computer science at a young age. Did he teach that to himself, or how did he learn all of that? Um, I had very limited computer science background myself, I, being a biology major in college and then going on to dental school. Um, but I did become fascinated with computers and had computers at a very early age, my first computer being an Atari 800 computer, um, which came with a little disk on basic programming, which I um, thought Mark might be interested and imparted that knowledge to him. And from there, he took off, you know, he got a book on C++ programming and ultimately, you know, his, um, his ability to program was self-taught, you know, with the help of some others. And, um, did, you, did you, I know your son watched the movie about him, uh, Social Network. Did you watch it? Um, I did. And, um, you know, what were your feelings? Were you annoyed or? Um, you know, I, if I sat back and looked at it as a movie and not as a uh, story about my son, you know, it was, you know, it was a tolerable experience. But you know, to to see one's own child on the screen portrayed in, in many facets of his behavior, um, which did not accurately reflect the way certain situations occurred and certain um, types of his behavior, that was disturbing to me. Uh you must have thought that he, well, most people thought he was a great sport last week on Saturday Night Live when he um, didn't hit the actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, when, a, uh, when somebody is so successful at a young age, are there pressures to, you know, continue the successes? You know, at, in his 20s, he's Time Magazine Person of the Year. Uh, he founded um, uh, Facebook. He's indirectly uh, helped motivate people to overthrow governments what's next for him you know that's hard to say i mean he's he just likes to build things and facebook is his vehicle to you know do what he wants to do um in terms of the philanthropy um um he's set up a a charitable um initiative and they've been giving money to um the newark school district you must be very proud of that. Yeah, I think he's um, he's doing great things there, and and obviously encouraging other people who are in fortunate positions to um, gift you know their their assets at an early age, not later on in life, is just a wonderful precedent. If there's organizations, say in Westchester County, not-for-profit organizations uh, that feel they have a lot to offer, are there applications? in which organizations could apply for um, for funding? Do, is there a Facebook foundation or uh, is there like a middle person you have to go to? No, I'm not aware that there's any such type of uh, setup right now. I think um, what was done initially 
for Newark is a uh, kind of an experimental thing and see how. Uh, uh, thoughts. It doesn't seem like you um, dwell a lot on, um, you know, on your son and your on, in, on your own uh, page, on your own uh, website. And, you know, you, you, you haven't given many, many interviews um, in the public. You're not taking advantage of your, your son's successes. Um, how come? Well, you know, we're, we're all about doing our own thing. And, um, you know, we're, I've always taught my kids to, you know, work hard and, you know, get what they, can, what they have coming to them through question for you i know you all do your own thing but has your life changed at all since the beginning of facebook well i mean i'm still pretty much the same person i think most of the people who know me will uh will agree that um you know i do my dentistry um interact with my family the same way i like to play contract bridge and uh you know, other than the fact that I get bombarded daily with questions from people about my kid, um, life really hasn't changed that much for me. Um, I have a, an 11-year-old daughter, and um, I was sort of wondering, this is a dentistry uh, question, how could I motivate her to do a better job brushing her teeth? <laughs> well, you know... Um, you, it's it's got to be more than just explaining, you know, or saying to them, you know, you you've got to brush for X number of minutes a day. Um, I think all forms of education or discipline or whatever class you want to call commanding someone to brush their teeth with should come with an understanding. So in our office. We like to work with kids at a very early age. Um, we start seeing kids at age two and a half when they have all their baby teeth. And as soon as they're able to understand, we not only show them how to brush their teeth properly, but we explain to them why brushing their teeth is important, why the plaque that they're removing when they brush their teeth is harmful to their gums and can cause, when they get older, cause gum disease. And Hi, um, I have a question about um, a book called Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother. I don't know if you're familiar with it. This woman got a lot of publicity for this book. Her child-rearing philosophy is you must push your children very hard at all costs, and um, that's the only way to get them to achieve. She doesn't allow sleepovers or pets or, you know, after-school activities like sports, just very strict schoolwork, violin lessons, that sort of thing. I'm just curious as to whether uh, Dr. Zuckerberg might have heard of this book and what his thoughts might be on it. No, I can't say I have. I, I really have not heard of that book. In general, in terms of, you know, that idea, I mean, you talked earlier about letting Mark find his own way to some extent. Um, I mean, do you think that, you know, that we should be very strict about homework and, and that sort of thing? Well, I think, you know, there's a balance in every child's life, and I, I don't, you know, I, I certainly don't want to put myself out as full on MySpace, which started a lot of social uh, media, hasn't been as successful. I, I have not really, um, you know, examined many of the other um, social networking media. Um, I've never been on um, MySpace for, for certain. And, uh, you know, I think that if there's one thing that, Facebook has done well is uh, people have to represent themselves accurately. People use their own names and um, you know your, your photos, you, you're out there for you know who you are whereas a lot of other forms of social media probably allow for a certain an anonymity or <clears throat> a persona that someone wants to create of themselves out there that might not be what they really are. Yes. Um, so, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Facebook is more real and more about what people are. It's really uh, true. I know just for myself, uh, when I use Twitter, it's very hard to figure out who you're communicating with or follow, following. But with Facebook, you know, I know it's the neighbor next door or somebody who lives in Duff's Ferry or Hastings. And you really feel that they're your friends and people see me all the time. I'm up to about 3,400 um, Facebook friends and people say, um, you're a friend of mine. And there, there's a, a much greater connection. Um, I 
uh, was wondering, do you use Twitter at all? No, I don't. And uh, Danielle, do you? Um, how much time do you spend on uh, Facebook a day? And your father's here, so you don't have to. Uh, you could ex you could exaggerate downward. Um, maybe a half hour. On other days, I don't have a lot to do. Maybe an hour. I can be on there for a long time. And most of your friends? Some of them are Facebook addicts. Yeah. Um, uh, do some of your friends have you know concerns that when they apply to college that you know things that they're going to post now there'll be a permanent record? Yeah, sometimes um, there's there's certain things that they say that can't be in the picture, you know, because they're worried. So they're very careful. Some of them. In terms of um, some of the privacy issues and the controversies over there, what what are you, some of your you know, your thoughts in terms of Facebook's, you know, approach? I mean, the tools are there to control, you know, what you put on Facebook. So, and it's up to all of us to be sensible, you know, not putting things on Facebook that you don't want out there. Right, and if people don't want to go public, they don't have to participate in this. Exactly. Um, in terms of, um, of, you know, some of the... Of, Future initiatives that Facebook may be, uh, you know, taking. Are there any um, any innovations that you think will be coming forth in the the coming months that you could share with us? Or none that I'm aware of. I mean, um, you know, when it comes to any info inside and what's going on inside the company, I'm just another citizen. But that's uh, thanks for that for that information. Um, in terms of um, advice that you would give, if, if, your, if your son was growing up right now and he was young and, you know, how much time do you think you would let him uh, spend on, on Facebook? Well, you know, again, uh, it goes back to, I think, what the last caller asked about, you know, that extreme parenting. I think uh, everyone's life has a balance of work and play. And work is hopefully something you're doing that you're pretty passionate about and that you enjoy. And play is something that um, you choose what is interesting and stimulating to you. So, I mean, if as long as, um, you know, we keep a proper balance in our lives, I don't see um, anything wrong with <clears throat> Facebook being that part of your life that um, you dedicate to... Uh, um, so-called non-work time, although certainly Facebook can also be part of work also. Um, in terms of uh, the, you know, controversy relating to the lawsuits pertaining to, um, you know, Mark and some of his fellow students, I personally think that the people who are, um, you know, claiming that they thought of the idea, I, I think it's an outrage what, you know, what, what they're doing because... It, it's not only the idea, it's the implementation of the idea that I think is, is what made Mark, you know, so, you know, so successful. I mean, what's your... I mean, again, my interpretation is just that of any other citizen. Um, I, I'm not that... Um, the, the, the concept of social networking has been around a long time. I remember when back in the 90s... Um, when I was an early AOL user, and AOL had a groups feature, which was social networking in its earliest form. And we, we even used the groups feature back then to uh, um, form a bridge club and communicate with each other. So I think the concept of social networking, I don't think anyone can take claim to that idea as their idea. And as you mentioned Implementing, uh, implementing uh, the concept of social media into something, into a form that we can all use, is something that Mark's really succeeded in. Um, one of the uh, things that excited a lot of uh, Ardsley High School uh, students when they saw uh, Social Network was um, the actor portraying Mark wearing an Ardsley High School, uh, uh, a t you know, T-shirt. Could you tell us a little bit about? Mark's uh, experiences at Ardsley, you know, high school in the Ardsley public school system. Uh, you know, Ardsley was a great school district. Um, even though we lived in Dobbsbury, we were part of the Ardsley schools, and 
you know, Mark got a fine education there. And then he transferred to Phillips um, Exeter Academy? Yes. Um, and, the, and at the Academy, he won many prizes in math, astronomy, physics. Was he always a, a, a great student? He, he was a good student, absolutely. He had special affinity for the math and sciences, and uh, he always excelled. Um, um, were you, uh, in the movie Social Network, they indicated that it was important to um, move a world headquarters like Facebook to Silicon you know, Valley. Do you think that contributed to the success of, um, of Facebook, the, the location of the, the headquarters? Well, certainly that's where the uh, greatest number of engineers are out there. And if you're going to develop a, uh, a company that's going to require access to the best engineers in the world, certainly going to that part of the country is certainly going to make it easier for you to get the, uh, the right kind of employees you need for a growing company. Uh, we have a call. I'm, I'm Paul Feiner with Dr. Zuckerberg. Good morning. Hi, Paul. Hello, Doctor. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Um, I'll just uh, totally change the subject completely, Doctor. I was, I was a patient of yours many years ago uh, when Mark was, I guess, still very, very young. And uh, when I was in your office, I noticed that it caught me quite by surprise that when I looked uh, lying in your chair looking up, I saw some fish swimming around, and I had not been gassed, you know? So... <laughs> I was very impressed with your fish collection. A lionfish actually swam out from uh, through one of those tanks. I'm just wondering, was that you know something that you did as a diversion, or was that a family hobby? Did that is that something that helped you know um, interest? I know you said you were a biology major, but any of your children uh, you know uh, you know fall into the hobby of keeping the fish? And do you still have them there, by the way? Out of curiosity. We still have the fish, yes. Oh. I've had the fish tank for almost 25 years. Um, you know, early on in my career as a dentist, I came to realize that patients are, they don't like to be in the dental office. They're, for one reason or another, it's a uh, threatening situation. Um, having the fish tank there initially was my idea to calm the patients down. Many offices have fish, but very few actually have them in the treatment room. Ours is an entire wall that actually goes between two treatment rooms, as you know, if you're, if you're a patient. Yes, I remember I looked up and they were, it was above me. It was very, very impressive. I'd never seen that before. Well, it, it becomes a distraction and a, and a relaxation, and not only do we have the fish tank, but we have... Uh, photographs throughout the office that I've taken scuba diving, which has become sort of a, a passion for me. Um, I've always been into photography, and doing underwater photography is, uh, um, is a real passion of mine. So, and we have uh, uh, paintings that were done by a local artist, and in fact, one of our rooms now has the, the entire wall is a fish mural. So um, the fish motif or fish theme um, it's been a good adjunct that we have used to, um, you know, divert and relax our patients. Well, it, it worked. It certainly worked for me. I was uh, an emergency patient of yours on a Sunday. It was the first time you'd never seen me before, and you were actually coming. You, uh, I, I just, I was desperate. I was new to Dobbs Ferry. I called up uh, my old dentist. They, they didn't, they weren't available, and um, I saw your ad in the local paper. I called you up. Never seen me before, and you took me on that Sunday afternoon. And uh, that I never forgot you for, and so I'm hoping to come back to your office again as a regular patient. Well, glad to be of service. Well, Great. thank you very much. We have another call. Good morning. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Um, I was wondering, back to the parenting issue, um, did uh, Mark's mother um, stay home with the kids, and do you think, uh, or, or stop work at some point to stay home with the kids, and do you think that... If, if so, did that contribute to the success of your children? I think it's very important for the mom to be very involved in the kids' lives. And um, um, my wife was a uh, superwoman, you might say, because she managed to work and be home. We had a unique situation where the office was in the house. So um, I highly recommend that if, if it works for, for your occupation. But... 
um, it afforded her the ability to both work and be home for the kids at the same time. Well, thank you. Danielle, you have a question. We only have about a minute left. Well, yeah, uh, before we were talking about how Mark moved to California, but does he still have his ties to Westchester? Does he ever come to you for dentistry advice? Uh, well, fortunately, he doesn't have any dental problems to speak of, but I still do his routine dental care. Oh, cool. That, that's great. I really want to thank you very, very much for um, participating in this interview. I learned a lot, and we're very lucky to have you um, in Duff's Ferry and, and in Westchester. And everybody I know um, who uses you as a dentist only raves about you and says you're just a really terrific person, a, a, ter a nice guy, and a terrific dentist. Thanks for having me on, Paul. Great. I'm Paul Feiner. I'm uh, the Greenberg Town Supervisor, and I'll speak to everybody uh, next week. If not sooner, and Danielle is um, involved in SNN Student News Network, and she's uh, working on a student news um, uh, reporting program. Uh, we have about 50 kids, right? Yeah. Great, and we're going to have our next meeting uh, Monday, 4:15 at Greenberg Town Hall. And if you want to become a student journalist, you could uh, join us at Greenberg Town Hall, 4:15 um, Monday. And the students will start airing their programs um, in about five or six weeks. I'm Paul Feiner. Thank you, Dr. Zuckerberg. And thank you, Danielle, for joining us.